Hi, welcome back to the Arcade Repair Tips video series. Today we're going to talk about wiring a game from classic up to jam. So, in essence, in essence, we know a lot of you guys have those questions like you have an old cocktail and you want to put a 60 and 1 in it. Well, there's a couple steps that you need to know about. And uh, one way that we've done it here is we've kind of laid it out and done a lot of the work outside the game. So the first thing that we did was we completely took out all the parts inside. Except for, you would want to take out the isolation transformer if your monitor required it. You need to leave that in there. But if you're using a newer style monitor that's needed, you can even take that out. And we'll talk a little bit later about wiring uh, power to it. But right now, this is just talking about the jammer. And as you can see, uh, you always want to start off with your power supply here. And then there's the two control panels we took out of a cocktail cabinet. So you have a player one and a player two. And then um, here's our 60 and one board that we recently purchased. Anyway, but what's really neat, what makes the job easiest to me depends on your JAMA harness that you buy. You might notice that when you go to a website, you might see a super JAMA harness or one that uh, they may call it the mega harness or whatever. You need to ask a few questions and this will help you, especially if you're pretty new at this. One thing that helps more than anything, even me as many times as I've done it, is to get one that's labeled. And this one has a sticker on it, as you can see here. It tells me where each of these wires in that pin should go. That makes it a ton easier. You can use the chart. You guys know how to find that on our website, I'm sure. But it's really easy when you, it's written right there. The next thing is that on this harness, it comes with the connectors already on there. Well, you know, we're talking about a lot of wires. And uh, if you want to save a little bit of money and do your own, but man, just for the time alone, these are not much more to buy. Now, some of the wires, some of them are even a little bit more expensive, maybe depending on the thickness of a wire. So I would avoid wires that are really thin, uh, you know, or the cheapest ones. Sometimes you get what you pay for, and this will just make your job easier if it already has the connectors, because you're going to use the connectors like back here where you wire up your switches or your buttons, okay? Also, it will come with uh, a lot of newer monitors now have a VGA cable, so on your 60 and one you don't have to, you can just run the monitor VGA cable from there to there. But if you have an older style monitor, uh, they do run the wires like this to your monitor. So what you can do is kind of bundle them separately. A good thing to have would be a lot of zip ties. And uh, you can kind of make it look a lot prettier and everything out here, which will make it really easy when we go and install it in a game. So you have your main power wires, which in this instance are right up top. You have your grounds. 5 volts and your 12 volts and your negative 5 and you run them all straight to your power supply and we've shot videos on this before so I'm going to kind of go fast but if you need to have any questions just let us know so these will be going out and then this was your player 1 and your player 2 harness and you just wire up to where they go now keep in mind that um, we have a cocktail cabinet here you might want to do this in a stand up version if you see, you can take your panel out, put it out here, wire up everything, then put it back in your game. Sometimes it's way easier where you're out here where you can see it than it is if you're up inside there and you're trying to hold a flashlight, especially if you're working by yourself. Let's look at all the individual components. First thing we want to look at is this is the harness, of course, and this is our board. You might notice that this says part side. I'll turn that where you can get a good look at that. It says part side right here, and usually on the back, they'll say solder side. Well, what it's talking about is the parts on this side, you see the individual parts. In other words, the, where the capacitors and all the components are, the solder side will be where you see the solder like that. So we wanna make sure that we hook this up to the right side. Even though a lot of them are keyed and a good harness will usually have a block of a plastic in there that's keyed, may not. So you could actually plug this in backwards. So make sure that that is plugged in correctly. 
part side on this side where all the components are, solder side on the side where you see the little sort where you do your soldering. Okay? After that, you'll notice there's some dip switches here. You might need to change those and, and so forth. But all we're going to do is I always like to start with power. And uh, we always start ASAP. We're going to start with power. If you look, the first few are grounds, your plus five, your minus fives, and your plus 12. Now, here is something very, very, very important. If you don't learn anything else from this video, please learn this fact. It does not matter what the color or these wires are. What matters is where their position in here is. See, in particular, on the negative five here, they used a green wire. I've seen that be orange, blue, white, uh, many different colors. Now, red is generally the five volts, and yellow would be a 12 volts, but not always. It doesn't matter. I could run a purple wire right here if I wanted, as long as where it ends up, is the five volts. So we'll go from the power here to the switching power supply. So what we want to do is make sure that that wire going to ground comes around here to ground. That should be labeled on your power supply. This is power going out so we're not worried about the AC coming in just yet. Okay then we want to make sure that our five volts is run where it's supposed to be, the red right there, red wire, red wire, those match. We want to make sure that that green negative 5 volts, according to the label there, is matched there and the 12 volts here. So it's pretty simple. You just follow the wires. These happen to be a little bit thicker than these wires, so that really makes it handy too. I know that these are our power wires. So we want to make sure that we run all those wires correctly straight off of the chart or the JAMA harness right here. Next, you can see would be, we'll just go straight down the line. This is how when I, when I run or run a cabinet, I just go right in order. They're labeled uh, 1 through 28 here. Uh, so the next one is a key. And then this is a coin meters. That's those little number things you guys have seen down in the bottom of the game, mostly for operators. Unless you just want to see how many plays you're getting, uh, most people won't hook those up. And in our situation, we're not going to hook them up. Then you got your uh, speaker wires, which are coming all the way off here. And you'll have two. So all you have to do is put this on one side of your speaker and this on the other side. Real simple. We'll show how to hook that up in a little bit. Then you're going to your video wires, which again, we're going to use the VGA, so we're not going to need these, but if we did, there they are. We'll just bundle them up and keep them out of the way. And then after that, there's the test button, which we will need to wire up a test button so you can get into the menu. Uh, coins, if you want to run your coin wires, you can do that so you can coin it up or you might want it on free play depends on how you want to do that your start then it goes one up one down and so that's where these wires will come around here now remember sometimes it's hard to tell which is up just because you're looking at the panel here we know that that's up by playing lots of games but if you'll notice it's not always the top Thing, when I'm going up I'm actually hitting this one so what I do is I go over there and actually play up and I see which switch is activated so this is up it's a red wire and if we go back to our harness here we'll see one player up is a red wire just like that so we know that we probably hooked that up right then if I want to go left I actually, like I'm playing, will go left, and I see that this is hitting this one. Well, that's a yellow wire. And I trace the yellow wire back around to one player left, and I see that it is a yellow wire. You guys might not can see that really well. It's kind of hiding under there, but that's a yellow wire. So all I'm doing is matching. See how much easier it is to do this outside here than in a game. So I'm matching, now I wanna go down, or if I go down, I'm actually hitting this one. 
that's an orange wire. I'll match that around. So what I would actually do is I would come from here and I would trace that wire. I'd have it in my hand and then I would go the direction, see which switch it hit and plug it in there. Now you may notice that there's three positions here and we talked about this before. It's three places to plug it up. Well in most situations you're going to, this one that's all by himself is your ground and they're all daisy chained together as part of your harness. They come from this big bundle right here. So they follow and they're just chained together and they follow all the way around. That's your common. Then this right here is your normally open. In other words, the switch is normally open. The only way it gets closed is when I move or when I push a button. And that closes it or completes the circuit and tells the motherboard what to do jump, fire, something of that nature. So, and then we just did the same thing for the other one. So, really not very hard, especially if you got the map here. We're just going to go down the map and then we'll turn it over and do the two player, everything on the other side. But let's show you how it looks in a game. Well, as you can see, the game is working. But, uh, Jonathan, if you want to come on over, I'll show you guys a couple things that we did. Now, where you mount your motherboard is kind of your own preference. We put ours down in the bottom. You have to leave enough room for the monitor. But one thing that people are always asking me is about wiring up the coin lights or lights like this. Well, what we did is we ran one of the ground wires here. You can probably see it better right here. Then we ran a separate wire. We tied this yellow wire in that we had ourselves all the way down to the 12 volts right there on the power supply. So we ran a separate wire. Now you say, how did I know to use 12 volts or 5 volts? Well, it depends on the light bulb. These are 161s, and they use 12 volts, so we ran 12 volts up there and see how good that they look. Anyway, and uh, you can see, kind of use some cable ties and stuff to pretty some of the wires up and get them up out of the way. You don't want a bunch of wires all up through the middle here of your game. So anyway, but it looks good. And now we'll put the top back on. Now all that we have to do is you have your overlay like this. We'll lay this down and then we're gonna get some new glass, put the glass on there, put the clips back on and wham, went from a uh, regular classic game to now a 60 and one. And uh, anyway, we hope that you learned something from this. Working with a cocktail cabinet, whether, no matter what kind you're working on, you're going to have to know how to open it up. You're going to have to be careful with it and use precautions because you're going to have a lot of tight space. But anyway, we hope that you've learned something. Again, of course, if you have any questions or anything, you guys know how to get in touch with us by now. So thanks again for watching the Arcade Repair Tips. Still in high def.